Hi everyone and welcome back to episode 3 of our Shooter AI tutorial series. In the last episode we got our enemy to aim at us and shoot when he sees us. So when we're hiding, he stops shooting and so forth. So this episode is going to be the start of trying to get the enemy to move around the map a bit more. Um, in this case we're going to get him started first of all just chasing us down and keep on shooting at us. So the way we're going to accomplish this is through the EQS system. If you haven't got it enabled, simply go to edit, edit to preferences and search for EQS in your uh, settings here. Make sure it's ticked on. With it ticked on, you will now be able to uh, incorporate the EQS system into your project. If you want more details about the EQS system and how it works, check out my EQS system videos uh, detailing how it works and how we can use it. So in this video we're going to talk about how we can use it to get the enemy to find the player in the map. Once they found the player, they're going to make sure they can see the player and if not, move to a position where they can then see the player. So what I'm going to do first of all is right click here and go blueprint class. And in here, I want to search in all class search box for just type in the word context. And you'll see environment query context underscore blueprint base. Now, what this allows us to do is it allows us to set the a, a what we call a context. And the context is sort of like actors that are going to be the sense a central or focus of a environmental query search. And we want one for the player. So I'm going to call this one player context. Open this up and you'll be presented with a normal blueprint screen. Um, but what we have to do is on the left hand side, we see functions, go to override, and we want to provide a single actor. And we're going to be very basically using this and the get player character. and plugging that into the resulting actor pin there. This will now mean the player is now part of this context. If you want to provide multiplayer and have multiple players available as this context, you want to go to functions override and choose actors set and that will give you a an array and you want to find all the playable actors and put them into this array. We're not going to do that, we're just going to keep it a single actor for now. So we'll close that, and now we can use this context to create an EQS uh, system. So right click, go to artificial intelligence, and choose environment query. And this one is gonna be find, ooh, find player. So this one will be very simple, and this one's gonna look for and find the player and see if they are visible to the uh, character. So it's a very basic one, this one. So from the root, we're going to drag down and we're going to choose points. And you've got loads of choices we have here. We're going to go actors of class. Choose that. And this allows us to generate points at the location of a certain set of actors that we can define on this uh, settings here. So with it selected, go to the right hand side and you'll see the details panel. And you want to look for the search actor class, drop that down, and you want to choose the class that you want to find. In this case, it's the third person character, i.e. the player character. And your search radius is how far you want it to look for these classes here. So I'm going to up this to 2000. And I'm done here. Click save. And that's now going to generate a point on our EQS system at the location of this third person character. To test this out, we can close this. And what I want to do is create an environmental query testing pawn. Go to add new blueprint class and in all classes search box, go EQS and you'll see EQS testing pawn. And I'm going to call this one EQS test pawn. Now what this allows us to do is we can drag in this pawn 
And in its details panel, we can choose which query we want it to test with. So we want to choose our find player one. And you can see it immediately has put a point on our player character because it is searching for all actors of that class within 2000 radius. That includes this one and it's putting a point on it. Now, if I was to move and hide this um, player, it will still see it. Okay, so if I put that there and if I just move this, update it, you can see the point is still blue, meaning that it can still see it's still a valid point. What we now need to do is do some tests or queries to see whether or not we can actually see this point. So open up your find player EQS and we're going to add a test to this. So right click, go add test and we're going to look for trace. And this trace is going to look for the test purpose. We're going to change that to filter only. And what that means, it's going to get rid of all the ones that are false and therefore only keep the valid points. The trace data, we're going to leave that as is. I think, uh, yep, we'll leave that as is. And trace from context. Uh, we could do a from context. That means it's going to go from a different uh, starting point to uh, the target. But I'm going to leave this as the query here, um, as the uh, context. And we'll leave that as is. Okay. Click save and close it down and now you can see the point has gone red that's because the trace the line trace which is going from the eqs testing pawn to this dot is for now returning false because it's getting blocked by this line of sight if i was to move the player back to the original space and move my eqs testing pawn to update it you can see the trace has now gone blue meaning that it's a successful trace and a valid point for it to look for so this find player testing is actually done. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to run this EQS uh, test in our behavior tree. So in our behavior tree, we've got our root selector and sequence, and then our focus with our blackboard condition with the shoot. Now this whole sequence here is when it has seen the player. So this selector here, the first selector here, we want to come out of there and we want to run an EQS query. So choose run EQS query. And we want to change that to find player. Now, this EQS is going to return a location. Okay, because it returns the location of this point here, not an actor, not anything like that. It returns a location. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go and create a blackboard key for that location. So go to blackboard, new key, and choose vector. And I'm going to call this one target location, like so. Click save, and go back to your behavior tree. So once it's done the run EQS query, we're going to come out of there and we're going to take it to move to. And we're going to take it to move to the blackboard key we just made, which is target location. Go back to your EQS query, run the EQS query task here. And on this is blackboard key, change that to target location. So this is going to run the query to find the player. If it's successful, it's going to take it to move towards that target location. And then this sequence will run once it's moved to its location to focus on uh, 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 the actor and then shoot the, uh, the player. Let's click save and test this out. So here we have the enemy shooting at us. If I was to run and hide, he is running towards my location, but he has stopped shooting me. So now we've got to figure out why that is the case. So if I push the apostrophe key while aiming at him, I can see the details of our behavior tree and AI nodes. I'm, with the number pad, you can turn these off and on. I'm going to look at his EQS. So we've got the trace working just fine. Okay. Now I've got a feeling 
The reason why that is the case is that because the query is failing, it is not moving on to these ones here. So what I want to do instead is, uh, it should still run. Let's have a look at this. If I open this at the same time as my game window, I can take a look and see how the behavior tree is reacting to the game. So you can see the power going down the, the branches for the shoot. And if I was to run and hide, he is now running towards me. It's moved to. Okay, he's moved that location. Okay, but he has not. It's not updating consistently. So why is that the case? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to be right back and brainstorm this and get back to you. Sorry about that. Um, I found that issue. Uh, so back on your behavior tree, we need to make up a separate sequence for this. Like so. And what we need to do is determine which one we want to run of these sequences. Now this sequence is going to run when we can't see the player and this one's going to run when we can see the player. Now we've already got this blackboard base condition here for when we can see the player. So I'm going to click and drag this onto this sequence here. And I'm going to do its opposite on this side. So I'm going to right click here and go add decorator blackboard. Click on the blackboard base condition. And you want to choose the blackboard key of can see player and change its key query to is not set. We'll also want to tell it to observer boards both. So when it does change, the blackboard does change, it will bought everything that's going on and restart. Click save there. And let's go back to our game. So he's shooting at me. If I run and hide, hopefully he'll run around and start shooting at me until and he'll keep chasing me and shooting at me. Now, obviously, it's hugging the wall very, very closely because it is following the pathing grid as accurately as possible. What we're going to be telling it to do in the next episode is be a little less computery and make it so it comes out wide on this corner so we can make it come here and come out like here instead. Okay, so it comes out wide rather than hugging the wall all the time. And that's going to be using more EQS to achieve that result. If you have any questions or queries about the Shooter AI or any suggestions you want to see in it, please leave a comment below and I'll look forward to reading them all. If you haven't thought about supporting me yet, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. And if you support me for at least $1, you get access to all the videos nice and early, as well as exclusive content and access to our Discord channel as well. Thank you to everyone who's supported me thus far. It's been amazing support and, uh, and uh, hopefully... Um, we get to see a lot of your work soon. I'm always interested to see what people's work is coming out as um, and showcasing it on the channel as well. So thanks very much for everyone for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.